Hi, welcome back. This is still Ken and we're still in our course in mechanics. And this is the last part of our lesson four on Newton's laws of motion. In this video, I'm going to teach you how you're going to make free body diagrams, which are very useful, especially in analyzing problems involving your Newton's laws of motion. But before going on to our lesson proper, in the last video, I left you with some tests your understanding problems. One of them is this one. In a classic 1950 science fiction film, XM, a spaceship is moving in a vacuum of outer space far from any planet when its engine dies. As a result, the spaceship slows down and stops. What does Newton's first law say about this event? The answer, according to Newton's first law, when the engine dies, since the spaceship is moving in a vacuum of outer space far from any planet, then there is no other thing or there are no uh, presence of net external forces. So when the engine dies, the spaceship will continue to move with a velocity before or before the engine finally dies. So it moves at the constant speed forever until an external force will, will stop the spaceship. So we can say that the movie does not follow or the movie violates the uh, first law of motion. So it's a wrong, uh, it's a wrong situation, which was a scene in the movie. Another test your understanding problem that I left you in the last video was about the Porsche Carrera GT and then the Volkswagen Beetle. So you are driving a Porsche Carrera GT on a straight testing track at a constant speed of 150 kilometers per hour. You pass a 1971 Volkswagen Beetle doing a constant 75 kilometers per hour. For which car is the net force greater? So since the net force is equal to your mass times acceleration, and both your Porsche Carrera GT and the Volkswagen Beetle move at a constant speed, that means the two cars do not accelerate. So that means uh, both cars do not have net external force experience. So that is the answer. So uh, none experience or none of the cars experience greater net external force since both of them experiences or moves at a constant velocity. Now we start with our lesson on free body diagrams. What's a free body diagram? A free body diagram is a sketch showing all the forces acting on an object. So in the previous videos, we discussed our four types of forces. You have your normal force, your frictional force, your, uh, your weight, and then your tension. So in a free body diagram, we are going to sketch all the forces present on your system in terms of your vector, uh, vector lines. So again, a free body diagram is a sketch showing all the forces acting on an object. A diagram showing the chosen body by itself, that is, it should be free of its surrounding with vectors drawn to show the magnitudes and directions of all the forces applied to this body. So the directions and the magnitude of the vector depends on, uh, depends on the magnitude and direction of your forces. And lastly, your free body diagrams has only the forces acting on the body that matters. So you're only going to include all the forces that are present on the body. So it's not that you're going to draw all the, all the four forces. So it's really the case that you have all the force, the four type of forces present. So you only include in your free body diagram the forces that are that matters on your system. Like say for example here. So you have a bus, uh, you have two basketball players. One is going to shoot the ball and the other is trying to block the shooting. So we can concede or we can say here that you actually have two systems. The first system is, or the, per, uh, the first body is you have your basketball player in white. And then the second body is your, uh, your basketball player in, in black. So if you're going to draw the free body diagram for this one, since we have two bodies, each body should have its own free body diagram. So let us look into the player in white uniform. So the, the forces that are present to him is only its weight. So since he is uh, 
floating up on the ground. So there is a normal force, there are of course no tension, and there are of course no friction. So it's only the weight that is acting on the player in white uniform. Our second body, the player in black uniform, is at the ground or at the at the, at the at the court so it has his weight and then it also has his normal force which is exerted by the the court on your player in in black uniform so again in your free body diagrams if you have one or more bodies you also you should also you you should have um, at least one free body diagram for each body like say for example here since we have two players that we're talking about so each player has its own free body diagram in the next videos let's have some exercises on how to draw your free body diagrams again in our free body diagram we consider your four forces your normal force your uh, your frictional force your tension force and then your weight so let's have here some exercises. So what we have here is a block suspended from the ceiling. And it is suspended from the ceiling via two cords or let's say two strings. And the first or one of the cords is oriented at an angle of 40 degrees from the ceiling. And then the other is at 60 degrees from the other side of the of the ceiling. It forms like a triangle shape and at the bottom you have your block that is suspended using your two strings. So the first thing that we're going to do in determining or in drawing your free body diagrams is we're going to determine the forces that are present in your system. So again we have four forces. You have your your norm, normal force, which is related to the force exerted by um, the surface. Then you have your frictional force, the force that resists motion. And then we have your, uh, your tension force. These are the forces related to strings, to cords, to ropes. And then lastly, you have your weight, which is the pull of gravity to your, to your body. So question, do we have here um, in normal force so for the normal force n so there is none since this is not or your your block is not on the surface it is suspended how about your frictional force there is also none since it it, it doesn't move you can say here that your system is in equilibrium and do we have your tension force Yes, there is. There are uh, cords in your system. And lastly, do you have the weight? Of course, there is. You have your weight. So now we draw the free body diagrams, but we follow the direction and the magnitude of your uh, vector lines, of your force vector lines, uh, with how your system is orient oriented. So here you have uh, the weight, which is downwards. Okay, so you have your weight here. And you also have a string on the right or a cord on the right. It pulls your, it pulls your block upwards. So let's label it one as T1. And then you also have on the left under the string, which pulls your uh, block upward. So let's call it one as T2, okay. So we don't have your normal force, we don't have your friction, so we only have your weight and then your tension force. So if you're going to draw your x and y axis, let me draw this one. Just forgive my drawing. This is your x axis and then your y axis. So here we have uh, two tensions, okay? So this one here, which you call T1, and then another here, which we call T2. And then at the bottom, sorry, 
add the sorry this is a little tricky but here downwards you have your weight but what about these angles here your 40 degrees and then your 60 degrees from your um from your geometry you know that these angles are equal to this one here so this is actually your 40 degrees and then this is here your 60 degrees if you remember if you're going to draw parallel lines and then you have here a bisecting line this angle here is congruent to this angle here this angle here is congruent to or equal to this angle here so that is the same concept that we have used in our free body diagram above so we have now here your free, uh, free body diagram for your system so it's easy as that so let's have another example So we have here a simple machine which is connect or which we use here some pulley and we have two blocks you have your m1 and m2 so your um, block m1 uh, let's say it it is on the incline which is at alpha degrees with respect to the horizontal and your m1 is connected to your m2 by a let's say a string and your string is bended by a simple machine which we call your pulley so we are uh, we're going to draw the, draw the free body diagram for your system so as i stated earlier since we have two bodies here then we should also have two free body diagrams so we must have a free body diagram for m1 and we should also have your free body diagram for your mass 2 let's draw the free body uh, the free body diagram first of your mass m2 since this one is easier so what we have here we have your weight which is downwards weight of mass 2 and then we have here some spring let's say that's the tension t there okay um most uh, sorry most students actually ask why is it the tension is upward so it's upward because it pulls your your mass upwards so if it does not pull your mass upward your mass will will go will go downwards so it has a direction that the direction of your tension is upward so that is the free body diagram for your m2 we do not have your normal force since it is suspended in the air we are not or we do not know if it, it, it has motion okay so there is also no frictional forces so that is just your free body diagram so we have here your tension t and then we have your weight 2 so that is your free body diagram for m2 next we draw the free body diagram for m1 for your m1 this is quite tricky but we just determine the four forces so what we have here are number one of course we have your normal force which is at 90 degrees let's say that there is no friction here and let's assume that this is in equilibrium since it was not stated on the on the diagram let's say that your system is in equilibrium okay so what are other forces here we have this tension here which pulls it to the right and since this system or the two masses are is connected by the same spring and this spring is just bended by a by a pulley then we just label it with the same t so they are just actually the same tension so the tension that m1 experiences is the same tension that m2 experiences and we said that this is in equilibrium so it has no acceleration and the last force that we have is your 
force due to gravity. And then always remember that the force due to gravity is always downwards. So it's always at 90 degrees. Uh, also with respect to this horizontal here. Or it's always directed towards the Earth. So it goes here downwards. So if you try to look at your free body diagram looks like this. So you have your normal normal force. You have here your tension force and then we have here your weight. So this is here the weight of your mass one. But this is quite hard to figure out. If you're you can rotate this one what we usually do is we extend here from the norm, uh, from the normal. We extend here some lines, okay? And we rotate or we take this one, this axis here, we take this one as your y-axis. And we take this one as your x-axis. And this angle alpha here is just equivalent to with this one here. And you can verify that one using your trigonometry or sorry, for you, uh, using your geometry. So if that is the case, if we draw your x and y axis, okay, pardon again my x and y axis. So if that is the case, we have here your normal force upwards. Uh, let me just pull this one, normal force. You have here your n and then we have the tension to the right, you have here your tension, and then we have here your weight. Wait for your mass one, and then we have here your alpha, your angle alpha. You can resolve this one onto its components. So we have here your weight 1x, and then we have here your weight 1y. Uh, okay. Again, that wiggly line, that wiggly line that you see on your vector, it represents your that you decompose your vector into its x and y component. So we have here now your free body diagram for your M1 and your free body diagram for M2. Okay. Let's have a last example. So we have here three boxes or three blocks. You have mass A, mass B, and then mass C. But for the system here, as you can see, you have your acceleration vector, which means that your system moves to the right. That is your mass A, it moves up, upward, your mass B moves to the right, and then your mass C, it goes downwards or accelerates downwards. And you're also given with the, the labels. You have here your TAB for the tension on this side, and then you have your TBC for the tension on this side here, on the right side. Okay, so since we have three bodies, we should have three free body diagrams one for each body. So let's do first the easier, uh, the easier, what do you call this, the easier systems or this easier bodies. Let's draw first the free body diagram for mass one. Okay. What are the forces present here? You have, of course, your weight for A, which is downwards. And then you have your tension here. And then this, this tension here is TAB. This is suspended, so there it does not interact with the surface. Uh, there is also, also no friction. So you only have these two forces here, but uh, if you're going to draw it now, so you have here your TAB. And then at the bottom, we have your weight of mass A. But in this free body diagram, we also include your uh, we also include your acceleration direction or your, or your acceleration vector. Let me just use another color for your acceleration. So it accelerates 
upward. Okay, it's always important to include the acceleration direction because, or that is to remind you that there's an acceleration once you're going to start so solving the problem. The next easier one, we have your M2 or your, this is mass A. So the next one is you have your, the, the next easier one is you have your mass C. So the same forces, you have your weight for your C and then you also have your tension here which is tension BC and then it moves downwards. No normal force, also no friction. So you have here your T, B, C, and then at the bottom we have your, oh, it's not straight line, but it should be straight line. So at the bottom we have the weight of mass C. Next we are left with the last uh, the last box or the last block, block B. So let's now draw the free body diagram for your mass B. Okay. So here we have your weight for B. It has here some surface. So we have your normal force. It is connected by a two or with, uh, with two strings. You have your, your tension. Uh, your tension BC and then on the left you have your tension AB and let's say that it is accelerating to the right and what if we include some friction F so if there is some friction F we add another one here some friction F oh by the way for mass C we forgot the acceleration direction so it goes downwards Always include the acceleration direction, uh, direction. So we can now draw the free body diagram for block B or mass B. So what we have are your norm, normal force. And then at the bottom, we have the weight of B. To the right, we have your tension BC. And to the left, we have your tension AB it accelerates to the right so it accelerates there and if there is no friction in your system this is just your free body diagram but if we had or, or if we have your some uh, sorry if there is no friction on your system this is just your free body diagram but if you include some friction on the surface and then your body beam moves to the right so we have here additional force to the left and you label that one as your friction. So these are your forces for your, uh, for your mass B. Again, if there are no other forces or if there is no friction on your surface, you're just, or you just have your four forces, your normal, your weight, and then your tension BC, and then your, ten your tension AP. And as it moves to the right, if there is friction, your friction opposes the motion to the right. So we add another vector to the left of your diagram, which is your friction vector. This is now your free body diagram. This is uh, a clear view of your free body, free body diagram for the last example. Okay. You have seen here some, fr uh, some friction force, which is equal to mu kn. We're going to discuss this one in the next lesson. So before we end our discussion on lesson four about Newton's laws of motion, if you remember on lesson uh, on the first video uh, video of this lesson, we discuss your four types of forces, okay? Nam namely your namely your weight, your tension, your friction force, and then your normal force. In nature we have these four fundamental forces of uh, nature and these are the forces which holds your universe to get together so we have your gravitational force you have your electromagnet electromagnetism or your electromagnetic force and then we have your strong force and then you have your 
weak force. These are your four fundamental forces. Gravity, which is what we have been acquainted uh, in this course, is an attractive force between masses, which according to general relativity occurs as a result of the effect of energy acting on uh, space-time field. This is actually a, a, more, uh, a more advanced definition of your uh, gravitational force, which is the definition of gravity by uh, Einstein and not, and not by Newton. And then the next force is your electromagnetic force or electromagnetism. This is the force that acts between electrically charged particles. This phenomenon includes the electrostatic force acting between charged particle at rest and the combined effect of electric and magnetic forces acting between the charged particles moving relative to each other. So these are the forces between your protons and then your electrons. This is the force that is responsible for our electronic devices and so on and so forth. Uh, the third fundamental force is your strong force. This is what holds together the nuclei of your atoms. So it holds together your proton and then your neutron in the nucleus. The protons and neutrons making up an atom's nucleus are themselves made, made up of a tree of simpler particles, which we call your quarks. Since we know that your, uh, since we know that your proton and then your neutrons are not your uh, elementary particles, but these are these are made of simpler particles called quarks. A particle called a gluon acts on a property of the quarks called color, creating the, the force pull. And lastly, we have your weak force. It describes how the quarks that make up nuclear particles can change from one form into another. The weak interaction or the weak nuclear force is responsible for some nuclear pheno uh, phenomena, such as what you call your beta decay. Of the four forces here, gravity is actually the weakest of these forces. So you have your weak force, but it's not actually that very weak. It is actually your, gra uh, your gravitational force. So that ends lesson four, Newton's laws of motion. In this lecture, we have discussed about forces and interaction. We have discussed the four types of forces. You have your normal force, your frictional forces, your tension, and then your weight. And you have discussed your three laws of motion, your law of inertia, your law of interact or your law of acceleration, and then the law of your law of reaction or action and reaction. And you have also discussed your free body diagrams. In the next lesson, we're going to apply your Newton's laws of motion into problems which are in equilibrium or to systems which are non-equilibrium. Thank you for listening. See you.